Today we will have a look into the implications for the bundle size if you are using icon libraries in Next.js 14. Because if you're using those in the wrong way, they can basically make your bundle sizes and JavaScript loaded into the client explode. We will have a look obviously into the right way to use it. So let's see what we are exactly looking into. So two different approaches, how you can handle icons is that you create an icon component. And then for example, here we have an icon component that more or less just imports this specific icon and then would render it. So you could also do it just like this. And then we have another icon component and this one is more configurable especially in the scenario where you have, for example, a headless CMS, you might want the editor to be able to just create or type in a string that relates to the string of the icon library. And he could basically just use any icon of this icon library. And in this case, you might want to see a component like this. So you basically import any icon, uh, for example, here with heroicons, and then you just pass the icon name as a string and then you select the icon from the icon library and you would just render it. So now let's see what implication that actually has and that might be a surprise to you. So here we have the page with a single icon and here we have the page with all icons. Obviously it's completely the same. Now what we're gonna do in order to understand what is actually happening, what we are running is a bundle analyzer. So the bundle analyzer is a Next.js package bundle analyzer and it's very simple to configure. You just have that in the Next.js config. So what we will be running is the analyze, but then also we would start the build. So it's not the dev server, but it's the actual production build server to see how does that actually look into the browser. So now the production build is running and we can see two things. So we have two pages, one, is using the all icons, basically the one icon component that imports all the icons and the other page is using just a single icon. What we can see here is already that the bundle size for those pages seems to be exactly the same. So if you would load the pages and look into the network tab, what we can see is the transferred bytes is 167 kilobytes for all icons. But then on the single icon, it is exactly the same. So it seems there is not really a difference. And for that, there is a reason. When we look into the Node.js bundle size, we actually see a huge difference because the all icons page is way larger than the single icon page, which we can see here on the bottom right. So it's very different size, uh, as you can see here. So the path size is really huge. But the reason here is that this actually all happens on the server side, which is not too bad because the problem would be if that would be loaded into the client side. And that's actually not the case. So if we would see into the HTML that's actually coming from the server, what we can see here is we would have the SVG rendered in the HTML coming from the server for the single icon, but then in the HTML coming from the, from the server for all icons, it is also actually the same. So obviously those are rendered on the server and the same is coming to the client. Okay, so that's already a good thing uh, to know. So apparently there is not really a difference between those two approaches that actually matters that much. But now let's have a look into a very typical use case for icons where things can go off. And that's when you add a button component. So one approach you could follow if you want to have a button that could have an icon within the button is to create a button like this. So you can specify the icon name of the icon you want to use and then also have the button. So here, for example, we have the button and then we would have this icon import all. We pass down the icon that we actually want to use which is a property from the button with icon component itself. And then we would also pass the children that we can use, for example, for some text. So on the page here, we would use it. We just use the button with icon. Uh, we pass the icon we want. So this, for example, could also be uh, coming or being loaded from some configuration from the headless CMS. And then we would just have some text here. So as the result, as we can see, we have 
button and there is an icon rendered. So now let's analyze this one. So what you can already see here is that the first load size for the icon button page is much larger than the one for the others. And the reason for that is that the button with icon component is a use client component. So this is not anymore a server component because a button typically allows you for client side interactivity, thus making it a client component. But since we are importing this icon import all component directly into this component, we also have the problem that now this component will become a client component as well. When we look into the bundle analyzer on the Node.js side, we actually don't see much of a difference. Both of those pages are equally large. But now let's have a look into the network tab. So the network tab shows us a dramatical difference. So the resources loaded here or transferred is much, much larger than, for example, than if we would just have the icon loaded uh, and rendered as a server component. So the question is, how do we actually solve that? So what we want to do is to not have the icons directly into the button component, but rather what we want to do is we want to have a button component that is a use client component, but that has no direct relationship to this icon component. And then how we would use that to have the same result, we can, for example, go into this all icons page, and then we would use the button component and wrap this one around this icon import all. Now, if we look into the outcome of the page, we have the all icons. This is the button also having an icon, and this one also has an icon. Uh, so as we can see, it looks exactly the same. But now let's have a look into the bundle size. So as expected on the server side, there is no difference. But now if we load and look into the networking tab here again, we have the 168 kilobytes transferred. So everything is cool. Nothing happened. And then here we still have the very large or the much larger bundle size. So as we have seen, there are two different approaches with the same result in terms of the UI, but that have a dramatic difference in terms of the bundle size. So what we need to look out for is when we have a server side rendered page, so this is a server component, we don't want to have large bundles, which the um, which the icon component that imports everything definitely is, as we can see here. We don't want to have that directly into a, in a component that uses use client, which is a client component. But luckily, what we actually can do is we can pass server components into client components as a child. And that does actually not affect the bundle size in a negative way. So what we see here is it's very important that we do not actually import large libraries or large components inside a file that uses client because that makes also this imported component a client component which affects the bundle size dramatically the better approach is to have a react server component um, like we have here as the page and then have our client components but pass in the server component or the larger components again as a child and that will keep your bundle size low. Okay, now we kind of understood the basics, but there is still a problem because we can make the icon not being directly imported in the use client button component, but the button component itself will likely be used in a component that has some interactivity like a button click handler, which then in turn is a use client component as well. So that is a problem as we can see here. So let's have a look into this simple um, site. We have a button, we click it, and now we have some JavaScript click handler that opens an alert and shows some text. So if you look into the code, what we can see here is our server side rendered page, and this uses an alert component. And the alert component is actually doing exactly our strategy. We have the button component and we have the icon import all as a child component. Now the button component has a click handler, obviously, uh, for interactivity, which makes our alert component a use client component again. 
And now we see the problem just shifted in the upper component because we do import the icon import all now in this component, which is the use client component, which makes also this import very problematic as we can see here. Now, as we look into this actual page, we can see that the first load is very large, which indicates that our import is not working as we actually would like to have it. And then also looking onto the production build, we can see the transferred um, kilobytes are also too large. So the question now is how can we actually handle this? So the solution for this looks basically like this. So I created another page. So this is the old client component page. As you can see, the bundle size is large. If you click it, it shows the alert. And now there is another page. As you can see, the bundle size is small again, but it has still the interactivity that we wanted. So the approach that we leverage here now is to split the component itself. So this one into two parts. One is the client and one is the server component. So if we look into the page of the split component page, what we can see here is we actually use an alert component server. Um, so this is the first part. This has the configuration. As you can see, it also has just the string for the icon that we want to use. But then in this component, uh, what we actually have here, we do the import of our dynamic icon import all. So the icon component that just imports all the components. We import this specific one here in the server component and we pass the icon string here. And now we pass this icon to our client component. So that makes this import still being in the React server components. And we just pass it down to the client component. But now in the client component, which is indicated here with the use client, we do can use the, obviously the, the click handler and implement the uh, client side logic here. And then we just render the actual icon as a child and then also for example, the text. So this way we avoid importing this icon uh, component into the client component, but then separate those. So in this case, we do not have the large bundle size, but obviously we still have the client interactivity that we need. So obviously I understand that all this seems a bit complicated, but if you want to have optimal results and also use, for example, dynamic icons from an icon library from within a headless CMS, this could be an approach that you can follow. But in general, if you have large imports, you should make sure to have those on the server components to not basically bloat your client bundle. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you have different approaches, um, please let me know in the comments because I'm always eager to learn, obviously. And if you like the video, give it a like and also consider to subscribe.